Right, let's look at climate change now and another unwelcome record. February was the warmest February on record. And we can take a look at the numbers. They're pretty stark here. This graph tells the picture that bar right on the far right hand side there saying February 2024. That was last month. That was February and uh, 1.77 degrees above pre-industrial Temperatures, a record. You can see those bars there go all the way back to 1940 odd, and you can see the trend as well. Uh, the latest claims come from the uh, EU Climate Service. To explain all the numbers, here's our climate editor, Justin Rowlatt. Spring begins when the magnolia trees bloom, according to Cornish tradition. And spring came early in Cornwall and the rest of Europe this year. Temperatures across the continent this February were almost three degrees above average. The exceptional warm weather the world experienced last month did not surprise climate scientists. It coincides with a near record increase in CO2 concentrations in the atmosphere. The link between CO2 and rising temperatures is well established. And this year, global temperatures got an extra boost thanks to El Nino, which brings warmer water to the surface of parts of the tropical Pacific. That explains why February was 1.77 degrees warmer than pre-industrial temperatures and why global average temperatures hit a record 1.55 degrees above pre-industrial levels over the last 12 months. It means we have temporarily at least breached the 1.5 degree threshold the world agreed to try and limit temperature rise to to avoid the worst impacts of climate change. February 2024 was the warmest February in record globally, with an average temperature of 13.54 degrees above the 1991-2020 temperature. And why this is remarkable, because for instance, it's a tenth of a degree warmer than the warmest uh, previous February, which was 2016, is not really surprising, because this has been the El Nino year where temperature tend to be warmer than usual. And more importantly, we have seen over the last few decades a piling up of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, which bring up the temperature of the entire planet. We all enjoy warm weather, especially after the downpours this winter, but we should worry when the seasons get out of whack. Some plants and animals can struggle to survive, though scientists say urgent action to cut emissions can still slow warming. Justin Rowlatt, BBC News. And here's Dan Mitchell, Professor of Climate Science at the University of Bristol Cabot Institute for the Environment. We, we in the climate community, we're not surprised to see these at all. Uh, we have this large scale um, heating caused by El Nino, and that's sitting on top of this long term trend in warming from CO2. And when those two things coincide, we start to see lots and lots of temperature records broken. So, so we're not surprised at all. Um, even the previous three Februarys were really warm and they were sitting on top of a, a La Nina. So that's the opposite of, of El Nino. So that was the more surprising thing, to be honest. Interesting. I just want to take a quick look now at some of the other numbers, some of the other data, some of the graphs we've got here, because as you mentioned, there's different uh, measurements. Let's take a look at ocean temperatures, first of all, here. And we can see that red line top left is 2024. It looks quite considerably higher than other years. Yeah, well, I, I can't see the same graphics you're seeing, but yes, the, the ocean temperatures are, are warming a lot. And we we see that in the impacts of that warming as well. So, so we're seeing uh, certain fish populations migrating uh, more poleward. Um, around the UK, for instance, um, cod that used to be very prevalent around here has, has moved up uh, it, northwards. We're seeing that impact things like coral reefs. And that, that's one of our really big concerns because if you damage coral reefs, you, you bleach them because of the, the change in temperature, they don't come back. And so that's one of the tipping points we're really concerned about with climate change. OK. And can you just remind us of this 1.5 degrees C? What does it, what's it actually mean? What's it referring to? So this is the Paris Agreement climate goal, and it says we, we want to limit our global average temperature to, to 1.5 degrees, and there's another limit, 2 degrees. Um, and those two limits were chosen because we know uh, certain impacts of climate change are particularly bad at those limits. 
Oh, but the limit, the limits, the limits over what? Because people expect you talk about temperatures. Why aren't we just using temperatures that everyone uses in everyday life? So, so 1.5 degrees refers to the globally average temperature across the year um, relative to what we call pre-industrial, so relative to before we were emitting greenhouse gases. And 1.5 degrees doesn't sound like much, but that's averaged over everything. And, and we know that temperatures warm more over land. That's where people and, and animals and diversity lives. Um, we know that it can warm more in cities, for instance. And so that 1.5 degrees, which seems like quite a small increase in temperature, can actually be five, six degrees when you really get down to the impact relevant scales. Well, thanks to Dan Mitchell there.